today we're going to do some Go code and I was looking through the Brico camp stuff and we're going to go with the port scanner. Now the bad part is that Brico camp promotes Python and I kind of hate Python, I'm not the biggest fan. So instead we're going to do this project in Go because that's what language I'm learning this time I guess, I don't know. But we will need access to the project here in Replit and mostly for the readme so we have good requirements but a very good resource to hear that I want to use is the common ports. I'm basically going to take this entire dictionary and convert it to a Go map because I don't want to type this by hand. It is a lot. This is also technically my first Go project, so we're not going to go too deep. But the goal of this project is that we're going to hit a certain URL or IP address, and we're going to scan all the ports within a range and print out whether or not that service is open. And then the reason why we have common ports here is because it's only these ports that we're going to check. With all of that out of the way, let's go into our terminal here. And we're going to make an empty directory called port scanner. We'll go inside of it. Um, before we open this up in the editor, we're going to just make a main.go file, which is our entry point. And I'm also going to use go mods to init this, which means we'll have to give it a GitHub address and then the name of the repository that it will go into and we're just gonna call it port scanner now we can open this up and before anything else happens let's just go scaffold out a hello world and let's see what this extension sure I'll update it now why not hmm there's a bit there's some stuff to install okay now it's ready. So before anything, we're just going to make a hello world. And this to check that we have go installed on our machine. But we could run this file by doing go run main.go. And there's our hello world. So the way I want to architect this is to have a sub package inside called port. And a little confusing, but I will name that file port.go. But this is where all of our port scanning code is going to live and inside of main we're just going to have all of the running tests that we want to use so this time this is package port because that's the name of the directory that it's in and before we go on i'm going to go grab that dictionary of ports and services paste it in here and then we have to change the syntax over to go so this will be a map where the key is an int and the value is a string and then the annoying part is to change all of these single quotes into double quotes, which I have done. So also one thing to note, at the very bottom, you need this trailing comma because this is how Go knows that this line doesn't end. Because if we remove this, Go, the compiler will automatically put a semicolon there and then it'll be invalid code. The next thing that we're going to want to do is add a function called scan port. It's going to take two things, a host name as a string and a port. The host name it could be either an IP address or a URL. It'll be up to both the user and Go to interpret it correctly. But with those two inputs, we can make a address here. Now there is one important thing to note, and that's port is a int, and we need this as a string. So for that, we can use the string conversion library, which is part of the standard library. And the function that we want is i2a. Uh, thank you, Linter. I don't really want this. But the address is now a string. It is valid. It just has a red squiggly because we're not using it. So let's go ahead and use it. And what we're going to use is the net package and call dial timeout. It takes, as a first argument, the protocol, which can be TCP or UDP. We're not going to go deep into that, but just know that TCP is most of the connection that you will find online. And then the last argument is the time, and we'll wait for one minute, so 60 times a second. The dial timeout returns us a, not a tuple, but it returns us two values, the connection itself and an error if, if there is an error. So we're going to go ahead and check if there's an error. And if there is an error, it just means that this port doesn't exist, or not that it doesn't exist, it, it means that we can't connect to it, otherwise we can't connect to it. Now this function isn't done because we need to actually close the connection or else it'll just be left open and our computer will just 
have that connection always on, which is annoying. But we'll use a special keyword called defer, and what that means is that it'll wait until the program is done. Not so much the program, but the function itself. You'll, you'll get it. It's, it's just gonna wait until all of this is done. And now we need to give it a return value for this function, which is a boolean. Now let's take this function for a spin. So we'll go back to main.go and we'll go grab port.scanport. And thanks to go mods, we're getting it from our subdirectory, which go will interpret as our GitHub re repository. And I'm just gonna grab something from the Python tests. Let's get stack overflow. And we're expecting 80, so we'll feed those two in first. And now we're gonna test this function on Stack Overflow on the port of 80, which we're expecting to be true. So if we do a go run on our main.go again, we got true. And let's just jam in a different number here. So let's go with 88, which I'm unsure if it's open, but we'll find out. I'm expecting it to be false though. Also, be, when there's no connection, it's gonna take a while because we gave it a timeout of one minute. So every connection that doesn't go through, we're gonna wait the entire minute. Oh, cool. And as expected, we got false. Now the next thing to do is to actually create this get open ports function that takes in both the host name and a range of ports. And then with that, we get an output that looks something like this. Right, before we create the function for get open ports, I wanna create a tuple data structure of some sort and go we can do that with a struct and this struct is going to be called the port range this is where we can have the start and end for a range of ports both of which is going to be of type int that's because get open ports takes the host name as a string as a first argument but our second argument we actually want a tuple that defines the start and end of our range of ports which i will just call ports and for the sake of simplicity we're going to start with a normal for loop here and we're going to use the ports.start value as our starting point. And we're going to go all the way to ports.end. We're going to use less than or equal because we want to include the ending port as well. And let's not forget our plus plus at the end so that our for loop will actually iterate through all of them. And inside of our for loop, we'll scan each individual host name on that specific port which we have in the variable of i. And right now we're just going to print out the port followed by true or false. And this is a template string. So percent %d is going to allow us to print any digit, that's why the d, and t is for true and false, so that will print out our boolean value. And with this, we can test it out, and let's go into our main and make sure that we're running this. So we no longer need our print line here, and we're not going to directly call scan port. Instead, we're going to replace this with port.getOpenPorts, and there's an error because we have to now provide two ports, the start and end. And to define our interface, we will have to call the actual object name or the struct name, I mean. And let's go with start of 75 to 85. And this is the first test in the Python script, which instead of stack overflow, we're gonna be hitting free code camp. So I believe what we need to just test this so we can do go run main.go once again. And it's gonna take a minute for every unused port but I believe 80 should give us a true. Well, that honestly took way too long. I don't want to ever touch main again, so let's just finish up. We're going to move back to the REPL here and go to main.py. And we're going to just take all of these ports, copy these because this is going to be our test suite. And then we're going to go into main.go, transfer it all over. I didn't leave in the actual Python syntax. But here, remember that we're doing the printing inside the function itself. So all we have to do is change the port range to be the interface that we created. And to quickly go over the test suite, free code camp, we know is gonna hit 80, and that's gonna be the true port with an IP address. In these was 11 ports. There should only be one available. I don't remember actually. Uh, we'll, we'll test it out later. This one, the comment says there's one single open port, which is good. And so is this. And lastly, on the scanme.nmap, We'll have multiple ports. Now the last thing that we need to do is actually clean up our port because if you remember from our readme in here somewhere, we actually want to print out the service name and also a little bit of prettying. So what I'm gonna do is make a couple of extra functions here and just use get open ports as the display of the output. But first I'm gonna move this to the top 
of here just because I like the formatting to have all of my structs at top and all my functions at the very bottom. It's a personal choice, it's not huge. But while we're up here, we're gonna make a new struct here called port result. And this is because we actually wanna keep track of the, the state and the service. State is gonna be open or closed port. And the service is from this map here so we can see if it's an FTP port or if it's an HTTP port and so on. And going back down to scan port, we're gonna replace this Boolean with port result because now we want to return a port result. I don't know if the language is correct to say we're initializing a port result here, but that is essentially what we're doing. We're gonna set the port value to the port input of scan port. And instead of returning false here, we'll set the state value to false and return the entire result. We're gonna do the same thing at the very bottom where this used to say return true. We'll do result dot state equals to true. And get open ports is a little mad, but that's okay. We're gonna actually take all of this and we're gonna steal it and put it in a different function called scan ports. This one's plural because we're actually gonna put the entire for loop here. Why is this non bool result? Oh, that's okay. So the for loop is gonna be in here. We're gonna add a couple of things. You'll notice that we still have the same inputs of hostname and ports, but this time we're gonna have a variable here for the entire list of port results. We're just call it results. In Go terms, this is technically a slice, but I don't think that's super important. We're also gonna use the net package here to call lookup IP. This is just a little bit of verification. We could check if there is an error and let's return false for now. And I'll return true down here. There's a lot of red lines because we're not using a lot of these variables yet. But the address here is actually important for our outputs. Because here we need to say open ports for the URL and then in parentheses we're going to give the explicit IP address. But now that we're also here, let's also make another interface just to make things a little simpler for display purposes. So back to the top, let's, oh shit. Let's add it down here under port range. And because I have no imagination, I'm going to call this scan result. So the scan result is going to have the original host name, all the results, but now we also want the IP address, which I happen to know is a slice of net dash IP. And the reason why I know that is because if we go scroll down and hover over address, we have the type. We have the type right next to it as a slice of IP. And this is coming from the net package, so it's net.ip. So now that we have that struct, we could also make a variable to keep track of it. And I guess I'll just call it scanned. But this is where we could do a tuple return by giving a parens on this. And we'll do scan result first and then the boolean after. Just so it has kind of the same format as this address and error thing. So we can check for the error, but yeah. Okay, with all that set up out of the way, we're going to change how this for loop works a little bit. So instead of checking the result of our original scan port, we're now going to check if the value of i, which is our index, exists in that map of all the common used ports. And this will allow us to skip over the long minute wait for ports that don't exist or the ones that we're not checking for. And the reason why it's v and ok is because v is going to be the actual value for the service name and ok is going to be saying if it exists in that map so if we scroll up 3306 is valid for mysql but 3307 isn't so so the one that isn't is going to return false and then we can skip over it for the ones that we are going to check we're still going to call it scan port with hostname and i so that part's not going to change what will change is that we're actually going to populate the service value with v and that's going to be the value of our map and then finally we'll append it to our slice of results and if you're unfamiliar with go this syntax is a little strange you have to call results.append with the first value being that same results value but the second one is going to be the thing that we want to actually add to the list and finally let's populate the scanned and result value thing the host name is host name comma IP is going to be address, which we looked up, and then results is the results that we've been appending onto. I made a mistake. This is not dot. It's going to be equals. That makes more sense. Now, the last thing we need to make sure that we're returning a tuple of scan result and bool. And to do that, we can just do scanned here, 
and a comma, and that's the tuple syntax. And we'll do the same thing down here where true is. And then finally, I'm going to make a display scan result function that will take that scanned result that we created with the previous function. Well, first we'll have that line that says open ports for uh, whatever the host name is. It could either be the URL or the IP address, and then finally the actual IP address. And on the second param here, instead of result.ip.string, we have to actually, I forget what the conversion is exactly, but it's changing the bits into an actual int. I don't remember. Um, if someone could let me know, I to refresh my memory, it'd be nice. But to get the actual IP address as a string, you're going to have to do this little thing up here. And then lastly, we'll just loop over all the results, check if the port is open. So if v.state is true or false. And then if it's true, then we'll print out the port number as well as the service name. It's kind of important to note here that this is this thing here is a tab and not a space. That's just to get us um, kind of alignment in our console output. And I know what you're thinking, why do we make another function here if we're always gonna print something out? And that's actually because we're not always gonna print something out. Uh, if there's no ports open or if the host name is invalid, we can actually output an error. And the error that we're just gonna say is it's an invalid IP address, so we could skip over it. Now, the last thing that we'll need to do is run main.go. And this may take a while, once again, because of the whole minute wait. Uh, actually, one second. I want to add a new line somewhere. Yeah, I want to add the new line right here. So then it'll be formatted a little better. So we could run main.go again. You'll notice it's a lot faster, and that's because we're skipping off ports that we're not expecting. The last one, it's going to take a little longer because there are ports in between. But there's the console output. We have here, it's going to be the port 80, which is HTTP. We also have the surface here of HTTPS proxy. And then for scan me and map, we have SSH and HTTP both open. So there's our little port scanner application. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this little foray into Golang. I'll probably explore more Go a little further, but I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all next time.